It's that time of year again when we're all glued to our TVs watching the drama unfold in the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments. Here's a simulation that I did a couple of years ago showing how SOLIDWORKS motion simulation can be used to find the perfect velocity to launch that basketball to make those free throws at the charity stripe. Take a look right now. We can use motion simulation in SOLIDWORKS to see if we can make a basket and determine what the best velocity for the throw would be. So here I have a basic scenario where I'm just launching the ball at a certain angle on a plane, keep it simple, and I'm plotting the distance between the center of the ball and the center of the hoop. So you can see we don't really get that close, we don't get within a meter of that. So I need to change the uh, velocity and figure out how fast I gotta go. In order to do that, I'm gonna set up a design study. And one of the things I'm going to do in a design study is I'm going to use this um, result as a parameter. So what I want to do is take this uh, distance plot that I have, where you can see I'm going from the center of the ball to the center of the hoop, and I want to actually add um, this as a new motion data sensor. So I'll go ahead and do that, minimum distance, and that's going to go ahead and create my displacement 3 motion sensor, which I'll use later on. Now, when I want to make a new design study here, I'm going to have parameters that I can use to just have it plug and chug for me. So one of the one of the things are the the variables. So my variable here, which is going to have one, is going to be uh, something I'm going to call the ball speed, and this is going to be a variable on the motion simulation. And in order to do this, I need to go to the simulation. Um, itself and choose the parameter that I want to vary in the study. So in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and get that initial velocity. I'll bring that in and now you can see I can choose what I want. In this case, the initial linear velocity, that's what I'm going to um, vary and you give it a default value. We'll vary it later here in the, in the uh, setup. Give it a minimum. We'll say we'll start at 6 meters per second. We'll go to 8 meters per second and we'll do it a quarter meter per second increment. So it'll end up giving me like 10 studies when I run this. Now, what am I gonna look for to see if I'm successful or not? Well, that displacement three that I just created, that motion sensor. Now, because the ball is a little bit smaller than the hoop, I don't, I, don't, I need to be able to very, account for the, the distance, the slop I can have. So if it's less than uh, 0.111 meters, okay, uh, then I'm gonna consider that a success. Um, with respect to my free throw study. And I just go ahead and run it. And it's going to go ahead and do it for me. It's going to highlight in red any ones that fail my uh, displacement uh, criteria and the ones that aren't in red actually make it. So you can see there's one out of 10 that actually will get the ball in a hoop. But I can go ahead at any one of these and then just run it and see what happens. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little closer so you can see this. All right. And we'll just go through a couple of them here. So if I'm going at six meters, I'm not close. Six and a quarter, I get to seven. Uh, still not quite there. When I get to uh, seven and a quarter, though, that says it's successful. You can see the run that actually I'm going right through there. So that's good. I'm really close to center, actually. So it's almost exactly a switch, which is great. And then beyond that, of course, I'm too hard. Now, this is a study, this first study I did live for you. I don't have any contacts here, which of course doesn't take the room and the backboard and such into, into account. If you wanted to go ahead and turn that on, I can just copy the study and add in the contact between all the objects. That's going to take, instead of a few seconds to run, that's going to take about half hour, 45 minutes to run all of them. But when you do that, again, it's the same parameters, um, and it's going to give me my results. So in this case here, out of, out of uh, X number, I have a, a quite a few more that will actually make my criteria. And again, I can go ahead and see what those results are right here. So again, if you run this in uh, real life and calculate, it'll take about 45 minutes to do it. But here we have the results pre-done. You can see that if I'm too short, it's going to bounce off the uh, front of the rim. And then I have this whole range in here where I can uh, I get it in there. So right inside, you can see a nice little bounce there. And these are all ones that are just making it. Now, you can see also if I go a little bit harder that I'll be banking it in, which is great. 
Uh, but there's that one uh, red one in between here, and that's the one I usually get, which is off the back of the iron and out. So you can see here that we have all the scenarios that we take, and if I wanted to refine this, I could do that with smaller increments as well and honing on some of the best stuff. And of course, you can go as, uh, to any one of these things and actually pick out that result, and it'll actually show that in the plot itself, in the study itself, and I can go ahead and do trace lines back and forth and get a lot of insight into what's going on. So that's a fun little motion simulation, but certainly you can do a lot more work-related things in SOLIDWORKS motion simulation. To find out more, contact GSC today.